I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up the everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. I hear you asking me tonight, who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Let me ask you this tonight. Has God been good to you tonight? Now that, that would be all right if that were for me or somebody else. But really, has God been good to you? That no matter how hard you or another person tried, you couldn't do it for yourself. Come on, let's give God praise tonight. I don't know about you, but I am excited to be in the house of God on tonight. I am. Matter of fact, I'm elephant elated and hippopotamus happy to be in this place tonight. How we celebrate one of God's greatest churches, the Turkey Creek Church. I'm glad to be in this in this sacred space. And then how we celebrate your pastor. Come on, let's thank God for Pastor Edwards. Amen. Come on, let's thank God for him. Amen. Amen. Thank God for him. He has an iridescent, bright future in the Lord Jesus Christ. I am thankful to have my wife and my two, my two children, Dylan and Delaney, right there. Amen. On the front row. Thank God for them. Uh, Pastor, Pastor Edwards, I, I introduce my wife every, everywhere she comes with me because there may be some young man in here who don't know who she's for. And uh, I just, I, I want to let them know, don't let this suit fool you. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank God for another one of our dear members. Amen. Sister Erica Jones, who, who's supposed to be in Bible study tonight. But we'll talk about that. Amen. As he already said, uh, our church is, is uh, we're having a Bible study because we are displaced. Uh, we've been out of our church since August 26th, but uh, the good news is that God never takes anything without giving us more, and so we, we, we stand and wait on tiptoe in anticipation. Now, I've been sitting here for now, I guess, about 40 minutes, and I've seen some of you not move yet, so I need you to do me one favor. I need you, I need everybody in the house to lean all the way left as far as you can. All the way left, everybody, as far as I see you, I see you. Listen, I've been black and Baptist long enough to know that somebody's going to say he didn't move, the preacher didn't move me at all. But you'll be lying tonight. You'll be lying tonight. You'll be lying tonight. You'll be lying tonight. Amen. There is a word that I want to try and lift up, and I promise you that I'm going to treat you like Kim Kardashian treated her first husband. I won't keep you long. Psalm number 107. Psalm number 107. Psalm number 107. Found Psalm 107, say amen. If you don't, if you haven't found it, say hold on. If you don't plan on finding it, say go on. Psalm 107, verse 8. Reads, Oh, that me. Praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Verse 15. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Verse 21. 
Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men. Verse 31. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men. I want to talk for the time that is ours to share together tonight from this thought. Give God the credit. God bless you. Give God the credit. A few years ago, I bumped into a story of a man in Athens, Georgia, who went to the bank to deposit $31,000. The next couple of days, he immediately got some notices from his bank that he was withdrawn, that he had overdrawn his account. And ain't no need you looking at me like that. You've been in that same space a few times. But this time, he knew that he had put a few year, few days earlier 31000 So he went to the bank to find out what the problem was. And he found out through the bank manager that the young, the young lady who was the teller at the bank had put the money in the wrong account. She gave the wrong person the credit. The truth of the matter is, is that as I stand and you sit in this silent space called the sanctuary tonight, there are many of you who have not given God the credit. He woke you up this morning. He, he deserves the credit. He put clothes on your back. He deserves the credit. You are still walking around with your right mind. You have not put your shoes on your head nor your hat on your feet. God deserves the credit. The truth is that many of us who are sitting in the place tonight are, are, are just like the, the teller who put the deposit in the wrong account. And when you think about how good God has been, how many wrong deposits deposits have you made? Uh, the truth is that you are, not in, you are not in a sacred region tonight because uh, the Psalter helps all of us in Psalm number 107 where we see that this Psalm is written because uh, of the children of Israel. They are going uh, through what is called the period of the judges. Y'all do have time tonight, don't you? They are going through the period of judges where the children of Israel, as one writer suggested, that they are going through a circular struggle. They, uh, they cry out to God. God delivers them out of their struggle. And as soon as God delivers them, they find themselves back in the same mess. They cry out to God. God delivers them. And then they find themselves in the same mess that God had delivered. And I, I'm not trying to get in your Kool-Aid. I really don't want to know the flavor, but I'm wondering how many of us that God has delivered us. He, he delivers us and we go back to doing what he delivered us. We cry out to him and God opens up the door of, yes sir, and he, and he writes here and he says this, oh that men would praise the Lord for his wonderful works to the children of men. It is, it is literally when you look at Psalm number 107 it is a repetition refrain. It begins in verses 1 through 9 where God delivers them from desert. They say we wandered around in a solitary way, but then not only does he deliver them from 
and desert, but he delivers them from darkness. I, I, I really don't, I, I may not be, I may be the only one uh, that God has delivered you from some form of darkness, but then he delivers them, this is my part, from, from their own disobedience. God uh, tells them to go to one way and they go the opposite direction. They, they are delivered not only from desert, from, from desert, from darkness and disobedience, but God delivers them also from disaster and as a result of it, he says, oh that men would praise the Lord. He says, when God's been good to you. You don't need anybody with pom-poms. You don't need a cheerleader. You don't need a, a praise team because uh, on Monday morning when they give me a raise, I really don't have a praise team at that time. And so he says, I, I'm praising him because of his wonderful works. I'm having fun. Can't y'all tell uh, to the children of men? Listen, uh, there are two things I want to drop in your gumbo while I'm standing over your pot, would you be interested uh, to hear them tonight? First of all, uh, he said that you ought to give God uh, the credit, first of all, pastor, because of his attributes, at attributes, at attributes. He says, oh, that men would praise the Lord uh, for his goodness. Listen, I, I've been in church my whole life, so I know the lexicon that belongs in church uh, uh, when it's time to give the welcome somebody or to come with the response. When somebody says, amen, somebody backs up with hallelujah and we use other words just like their root and rote and routine. There is one word that we use in church that we may not be using it the right way. We say God is good. We say it as if it is no death. Listen, it is more than rote and routine. It is more than ecumenical cliche. It is really God saying it is who I am. It is an eternal attribute. Y'all are still looking. Let me, let me, let me, let me break it down. Let me, so it can, let me break it down. Listen, God is good is not just something you say. It is who God is because without, but listen, let me tell you, there is no goodness without God and there is no God without goodness. Let me I think that's a tweetable moment. There is no goodness without God and there is no God without goodness. Everywhere God is, God is good. Is there anybody in here who can testify that whether I'm up or down, God is good all the time? He begins by saying, oh. That men, it is a guttural, guttural uh, a cry of the soul. It is the truth. He says, "Oh, it is not a, not only an exclamation; it is simply a, a, a transformation." Oh, that men would praise God because of His goodness. Listen, listen. Moses wanted to see God's goodness. The, uh, he said, "Listen." He said, "Listen, God, I want to see you." God said, "I'm so good, you can't." handle me from the from the front side you've got to handle me from the back side and it says that even God's back side is better than our front side can I tell you how good God is that listen God said you can't see me where I am you can just see where I've been and the trail of my have beenness is better than you where you are now God is good all the time. Listen, matter of fact, that, that's why the writer says, and we know that all things work together for good to those that love God and to those who are the, who are the called according to his, yes sir, to his purpose. Listen, uh, listen, wherever God is present, there is goodness. But then not only does it give, uh, uh, give God credit because of his attributes. I told you it wouldn't be long. I'm, I'm almost finished now. Listen, we ought to give God the credit because of his actions. He says, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Listen, listen, what he, what he is suggesting, pastor, is that victors ought to be vocal. That if you have the victory, you ought to look like you got the victory. You ought to act like you got the victory. 
You ought to come up in church like God has done something for you that he's been good to you. Listen, victors ought to say something about the goodness of God. Can I tell you that victories come with responsibility? Oh, God, if God woke you up this morning, the least you can do is throw up your chocolate hands and tell him thank you. If, if he paid bills, you ought to tell him, Tata, you ought to listen, you, you ought to give him praise just because of his goodness. Matter of fact, the, one, writer, one, one writer of the psalm says this, let the redeemed of the Lord Say so. Can I tell you the problem with us? The reason we don't give God praise and worship like we ought to uh, uh, sometimes uh, because we are afraid of what other people are going to say. I've been pastoring and preaching almost 20 years, so I know that some of us don't give God praise because we're worried about what other people ha ha have to say. Can I tell you? Can, can I tell you? Other people didn't wake you up this morning. And, and other people, uh, listen, uh, and, then we, and then we worry about what people are going to say. And pastor, we worry about people talking about us. Listen, can I tell you what I tell the people at Canaan? Uh, I said, listen, if you're going to talk about me, I'm going to give you something to talk about. Because you don't know how good God has been. You don't know the ways he's made for me. And listen, can, and listen if you're going to talk, I'm going to tell you how he paid my bills. I took care of my children. I put money in my pocket. If, if you're going to talk, I'm going to give you something to talk about because God is just that good. The problem with a lot of us is that, we, that we've been delivered. We just don't know that we've been delivered. Uh, uh, uh. On September 22nd, 1862, Abraham Lincoln signed into law what is called the Emancipation Proclamation. The problem with that is that the reason now that we, that we drink red pop and uh, eat watermelons on Juneteenth is because it took three years from written to ratification uh, because they were free for three years. Uh, they just come here because y'all looking at me, but y'all ain't listening. Uh, a whole lot of y'all uh, are free, but you just don't know how, is there anybody in here that'll say the divorce ain't final yet, but I'm going to praise him before I get out. I, I don't have the raise just yet, but I'm going to praise him in advance. I don't have it yet, but I've learned how to praise him in advance. He says, he says, he says, oh, that men would praise the Lord. He says, for his wonderful works to the children of men. L listen, listen, when he talks about children of men, he's literally talking about the extraordinary exploit of, of, of mankind that Jesus Christ died for us. And you ought to put a period there because that's enough for you to shout about. The, the problem with us in the church is that we only shout about cars, clothes, and creature comforts and a new boo. But can I tell you? That just because Jesus got up, that's enough for me to tear this church up tonight. Because, listen, yes, sir, I used to be drunk as Cooter Brown. I used to, uh, let me look over here because y'all messy on this side. Listen, I, I used to cuss like a sailor, but I've been delivered by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I got to tell him, thank you. Yes, sir. Listen, listen, listen. Can, can I tell you, the only way we understand God's being is by his doing. Can I break it down for you? That God, God is. And the only way we know that God is because he keeps on doing stuff for us. Yes, sir. I, I thank God because he is. I know that I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I, I know he's living no matter what men say. Listen, I, I see his hand of mercy. I feel his, I hear his voice of cheer. And if, listen, I know God because he's, can I ask you one question? When was the last time you recognized how good God is, has been to you? How, when was the last time you recognized how good God is to you? Listen, we understand his doing, but then he says, for his wonderful works 
to the children of men. Listen, his wonderful works. That, that literally means that he's the one who can do stuff like nobody else can. I'm trying to get out of here. But I'm telling you, that's why you ought to praise God. Because he's the only one who can bring you out without a doubt. And if you have been delivered, the least you can do is open up your mouth and give God praise because you've already been delivered. I leave you, I leave you tonight by reminding you of the story of a little boy by the name of Willie Myrick. Little Willie Myrick, yes, he, he gotten kidnapped. And he had gotten bound, yes. He had gotten bound by the kidnappers. But the whole time uh, they were trying to bind Willie Myrick. He was singing a song, uh, and the song, some of y'all may know it, from praise and worship. And the song is, uh, every praise uh, is to our God. Every word of worship, yes, uh, is to our, to our God. Uh, they put him in the trunk and he kept on singing louder and louder. Every praise uh, is to our God. Uh, every word of worship, yes, uh, is to our God. Uh, they put him in the car. He kept on singing until uh, they, it got on their nerves. Uh, and when he got out, they wondered uh, why uh, he got, why he kept on singing. Uh, and he said, the only way uh, I was going to get out uh, is that I had to open up my mouth uh, and sing my song. Uh, Good evening, y'all. Uh, may the Lord uh, bless you real good. Uh, but I'm wondering tonight, uh, do I have anybody bound? Uh, I double dog dare you uh, to open up your mouth uh, and start giving God praise. Uh, your word uh, may not be uh, every praise uh, is to our God, uh, but your word uh, may be uh, that I, I found a friend uh, and his name is Jesus. Uh, your word uh, may be uh, can't nobody. Uh, do me like Jesus. Why, Pastor? Because he's my friend. I'm through with you now. May the Lord bless you real good. But all I come to tell you is if God's been good to you, then you ought to open up your mouth and tell him thank you. When I went to Jones High School in HISD and we had had a bad football team, uh, but we had some good cheerleaders, uh, and the cheerleaders, uh, when the football team uh, would be down, uh, the cheerleaders would begin a cheer like this. Uh, they'd say two bits, four bits, six bits, uh, a dollar. Uh, all for the Falcons, uh, you ought to stand up and holler. Uh, well, I, I got a new team now. Uh, I'm on the Lord's team now. Uh, is there anybody here uh, that's on the Lord's team? Uh, did you bring your pom-poms tonight? Uh, did you bring your pom-pom tonight? Uh, two bits, uh, four bits, uh, six bits, uh, a dollar. Uh, all for Jesus, uh, you ought to stand up uh, and holler. Uh, can you say yes? Can you say yes? Uh, can you say glory? Uh, can you say glory? Uh, can you help me? Uh, can you find a neighbor uh, and just take them by the hand uh, and say, neighbor? Uh, some of y'all ain't looking at nobody. Uh, can you say, neighbor? Oh, neighbor, oh, neighbor, be not dismayed, whatever betide you, God will, God will, God will take care of you, say yes, say yes, yes, I know he's all right, hallelujah, two bits, Four bits, six.
six bits a dollar all for Jesus. You ought to stand up and holler. Say yes. Say yes. I know it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wish you felt like I felt. How do you feel? I got a feeling. I got a feeling. I've got a feeling. I've got a feeling. I've got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. Say yeah.